What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we've got this Halloween paper cutout design. Now there's links in the description down below to everything you're going to need for today including the free stamps that I've provided and the palette and everything else that you're going to need for today's design. So check out the requirements down below and if you want even more tutorials from me I post three more every single month over on my Patreon to Patreon supporters. Hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support and with all that said let's get started. So once you've created your canvas, the first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is go up to our colours. Let's just double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black first of all. If we go to our brush library, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go down to calligraphy and the monoline brush. And the brush size for me is set to about 3%. It's not really critical in your size, but all we want to do is draw a circle in the middle of the screen and pop your finger on the screen to make sure it's a nice perfect circle. And we want to grab our cursor. We want to tap on it and we want the size to be around about 974 by 974. So there we go. And if you make sure snapping is turned on in the bottom left hand corner here, we're going to go ahead and position this on that center line roughly there. So that's good for height wise and on that center point. Then what we're going to do is go up to our actions and we're going to go to our canvas and we're going to edit the drawing guide. So turn it on and then edit it. Go to the option of symmetry and we're going to go to options and we're going to make sure vertical is turned on. So if we hit done, our layer now will say assisted, meaning we can draw on one side and it will repeat on the other. And so we're just going to create the curve that's just going to curve out here. Not too much of a flick on it, just a little bit. And then bring that in at the center like so. So a little bit like that. And then if yours is a little bit like mine, what we could just do with smoothing this out, we're just gonna start at this point here and basically mimic the line that we've got, but creating a little bit more of a perfect curve going point to point, and then let go of your pen when you're done. You may need to manually go in here and just fill in any little gaps, but what you should then be able to do is drag and drop your color into both areas and if there's any other little areas at the bottom. Then what you need to do is go to your layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Grab your cursor and use the freeform option, make it a little bit more narrow and bring it down a little bit and also flatten it from the top. Now you want to make sure you hit that center point and you'll end up by duplicating the layer, you'll end up with the same nice curvature at the bottom. And if we tap on our cursor when we're done, we've now got that really cool little sort of bed sheet look to it at the bottom. So go to your layer and then pinch the two together, grab your cursor and just make sure it's in the center of your canvas like so. You tap on your cursor when you're done. The next step is to go to the layer and tap on it and add a mask. The mask will be white by default, but if we go to our colors and double tap at the bottom of the disk to select black. We go back to our layers. The layer is assisted, meaning if we go to our brush and make sure it's still the monoline at 3%, we can now zoom in and create some of the eyes. And then all you wanna do is just somewhat roughly here, you wanna create a nice smooth arc, hold your pen down when you're done. And create a nice little arc like this and then from point to point you just want to create another little arc underneath hold your pen down and you can adjust that arc making sure it lines up nicely and then when you're done just drag and drop your color in next what you want to do is then go to your layer and pinch the mask to the layer let's then start to use this as a cookie cutter shape for the rest of the layers going forward so we create a new layer at the top we go to our colors and we grab the first color in the palette top left go back to the layer Go to the ghost and tap on it and select it. Make sure color fill is grayed out and you don't want that turned on. But we then want to invert the selection down here. Go back to your layers and the empty one that you made at the top, tap on it and fill it. Then you can delete the ghost by swiping it to the left and deleting it. And now you're left with everything colored in around the outside, including the eyes, ready for the scaling effect, making it smaller as we go. So let's go to our layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Then the bottom one out the two, tap on it and alpha lock it. Go to your colors and grab the second color on the top row. Go back to your layer, tap on it and fill it. Grab your cursor and using the uniform option, just scale it down in size and pop it smack bang in the center. Again, making sure you've got snapping turned on. This will be quite important going forward. 
until you make something roughly around about this sort of size and make sure we hit those orange lines and tap on your cursor when you're done. Now we need to go back to the layer for a moment and tap on it and turn off the alpha lock because we've got this little gap running around the outside. And all we do is just drag our color towards the outside edge and that will fill in everything around that outside. Now we go back to the layer and we repeat this all the way down. So we swipe the layer to the left and we duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, we tap on it and we alpha lock it. We go to the next color. We're making our way from left to right, so we grab the third color this time. Go back to your layers and tap on it and fill it. Grab your cursor, grab the uniform option and scale it down in size and position it in the center. Scale in that down and tap on your cursor when you're done. Now really you want to make sure your gap is almost the same if not a smidge smaller but you just want to kind of match that up size wise to make your way all the way down. Now go to your layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two. Go to your colors and grab the fourth color on that top row. Go to your layers and tap on it and fill it. Grab your cursor and with the uniform option just scale it down in size and again same sort of rules apply, make sure your gap's almost the same, if not slightly smaller. And position it right in that center point. I'm just going to make one a little bit bigger, hit that point perfectly, and tap on your cursor when you're done. Then go to your layers and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two. Go to your colors. Let's grab the fifth color now on that top row. Go back to your layer, tap on it and fill it. Grab your cursor and just scale that down in size. Position it nicely in the center. Again, same rules apply every time. And tap on your cursor when you're done. Then go to your layers, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two. Go to your colors. And now let's grab the sixth color on the top row. Go back to your layer, tap on it and fill it. Then grab your cursor and scale it down in size. Hit in that center point and again exactly the same rules apply just consistency all the way down and tap on your cursor when you're done then go to your layer swipe it to the left and duplicate it the bottom one out the two we go to our colors and we grab the final color which is actually the second from right we're going to grab that color we're going to go back to the layer tap on it and fill it we're going to grab our cursor and of course scale it down in size and fit that nicely in that gap making sure we're nice and consistent and we're going to make this one a bit bigger so that the gap's a little bit smaller and tap on my cursor when I'm done now the back area there we go to our colors or layers we go down to our background color and we grab the far right color in our palette and hit done and now you've got that depth effect making its way all the way down now at this stage is where we start to add in all the cool little parts per layer so if we go to our layers and go right to the top we're going to go to our colors and grab the first color to match. We're going to go to our brush library and we're going to continue using the monoline brush on this occasion because we're going to start adding in some webs. So I'm going to add in a web here in the bottom left hand corner and to do this just create a nice sort of curve, hold your pen down and then create another sort of flick out and you can then create the curves going in the opposite direction if you wish, something a bit more like that. And then another one, let's just do one more holding my pen down just to get rid of that straight line. And then from there, we just start to create the nice curved little lines that link up all the points. So go from point to point, creating a nice curve as you go. And then when you get to the edge of your canvas, just run it off the side there. Create a nice little curve right on the top. I call this sort of daisy chaining. So we go across like so, hold your pen down, or undo that, should I say, if it goes straight. And then let's continue to just do that all the way across our little webs and go side to side as well. So just link them up if they need to be. And that's all we need to do. We just need to create some really fun, nice curve lines in our webs, like so. Now it's totally up to you what you add at each layer. I'm gonna go through it obviously with my design, but if you wanna change it up, feel free to do so. But I feel like this is the best solution or the best sort of layout as I've practiced a few times. But of course, feel free to put your own spin on it. Now, when you get towards the end, the only thing I recommend is that you grab, say, one point and just run it off to the end. It's kind of like the supporting webs almost like this. So it goes corner to corner. Look how cool that looks. We've got a nice little web there in the bottom left. Now, we don't need to add a lot of things per layer. We just want to add a few things per layer. So that's actually that layer done. We don't need to do anything else to that layer now. 
We're going to go down a layer, however. We're going to create a new layer on this occasion and go to our colors and grab the next color to match, which is the second color. Now I've made a separate layer because we're going to go to our brush library and right at the top it should be, you'll find your Halloween stamps that I've provided in the description down below. So we've got some stamps that we can have some fun with. We've got the pumpkin stamp, which I'm going to use now. I'm going to make my brush size about 11%. I'm going to tap in the middle of the screen. And because we put it on a separate layer, we can now adjust it. So if we go to our cursor, we can rotate this a little bit, scale it down, and I'm going to position it down here in the bottom right hand side. So I'm going to move this until it fits quite snug in here. I want to get rid of this little gap potentially. I'm going to position that in here, maybe make it a little bit smaller. Tap on my cursor when I'm done. And there we go, we've got a nice little pumpkin on this level. You can add multiple things per layer. If you want to, you can go up to your layers, but I recommend you create them on separate layers. So on this occasion, we're going to create another layer. We're going to go to our stamps, and I'm going to grab the bat. I'm going to make the bat roughly around about 12%. The size isn't critical. It's just for adding it onto the screen like so. Grab your cursor and just scale it down. Rotate it a little bit and make sure it touches the sides. It's always got to touch the sides. And something roughly, say, positioning wise like here is good. Tap on your cursor when you're done. And that's it, I wouldn't add much more than two per layer. So now go to your layers and pinch those three onto one. Go down a layer, create a new layer, go to your colors and grab the color to match, which will be the third color now, and then pick what you wanna do. Now I'm gonna go back to my brush, and if you don't already know, you can go right to the top and go to recent, and then you can use the monoline brush again, or jump between the Halloween stamps, which will be right there at the top. Now I'm going to go ahead and right at the top here, I'm using this color here, I'm going to create another little web. I'm going to create a nice little arc and then from that point somewhat create other little arcs that are just running off from it. Maybe hold your pen down on certain occasions and just create nice sort of curved arcs and drag them out. And then let's do the same up here too, nice little curve, maybe make this one a bit smaller where it just can now tuck in behind there. And then again we just go ahead and create really fun little curves. Quite simple shapes really, but it's nice and effective. And create some nice little curves. Maybe even I'm gonna let this one run off up to there. And then we create all the sub little curves. We just run edge to edge. And you always want your things that you add, as I mentioned, to stick to the sides. So that's why this web is right close up into the top left hand corner. And again, you could add in maybe some supporting lines, such as here and like here. And there we go, we've got a little web on this layer. Now for this one, I'm gonna leave that as is. We're gonna go ahead and go to our layers and pinch that web down a layer. We're then gonna to go to the next layer down and create another new layer. We're gonna to go to our colors and grab the one to match, which is the fourth color. We're then gonna to go to our brush library and I'm gonna use the witch stamp on this occasion. I'm going to go ahead and my brush size again, it doesn't really matter too much, but we're tapping in the middle of the screen, 18%, grab your cursor and just adjust it to where you think it will fit. So I'm going to scale this down, I'm going to flip it horizontal, I'm going to move it off to the right hand side here, so just giving it a little bit of space in this area here, and I think we could scale it down just a little bit more, maybe even rotate it upwards a little bit, and tap on your cursor when you're done. Now I'm happy with that layer as it is, so I'm gonna go back to my layers and pinch the two together. I'm gonna to go down a layer and create another new layer. We're gonna to go to the colors and grab the one to match, which will be the fifth color on the top row. I'm gonna to go to my brush library. I'm gonna use the bat stamp on this occasion. Again, we're gonna just tap in the middle of the screen to add the bat. Grab our cursor, and I'm gonna scale this one down quite small because it's getting further back, and I wanna use it in this space up here. So we don't have a lot of space to fit it in. So I'm gonna just position that roughly like there, maybe even a little bit smaller and tap on my cursor when I'm done. I'm pretty happy with that, how that sits. And then I think we've got a nice little gap down here to also add in another little web. So we're gonna to go to our layers. I'm gonna create another new layer just in case I need to move it around. Go back to my brush library and go to the monoline brush. Brush size is still exactly the same size and we're working in this color here. So we can do exactly the same sort of process. We just create a nice little curve out from these points. And then another curve here. We can create another one that maybe runs up a little bit higher there. Just can't see it too much. 
and then we create nice little curves from the points. We can guesstimate where that is in behind there, that's fine. Create a little supporting line here for the web. And then let's go ahead and create a curve here and create our little cool web. Now you don't want these to be too small and too cramped, so make sure you do leave a gap just so that you can add in all the rest of the effects when we get through the rest of the design. So I'm happy with that web where that is. We can go up to our layers and we pinch all three of those layers together for that section. We go down a layer, we've only got two more to go, so we go ahead and create a new layer above it. Go to our colors and I believe it's this color here, so the third one from the right. On this layer, I'm gonna to go to my stamps. So I'm gonna to go to my brush. I'm gonna grab another pumpkin. I'm gonna go ahead and tap in the middle of the screen. Grab my cursor and scale this down for size. It's gotta be a bit smaller than this one because obviously it's a lot further back. And we can maybe position this a little bit in this corner, maybe cram that in there. If we zoom in, I just wanna avoid that eye being a little bit open. So maybe if we can try and get a little gap in here. Maybe even scale it down. Oh, that looks pretty good. Let's do exactly that. Let's pop that in there. And there we go, we've got another little pumpkin in the back. I'm only gonna add the one on this occasion, so we're gonna go to our layers and pinch the two together. And if we go down to our final layer, we're gonna create another new layer and go to our colors and grab the second color from the right. We're gonna go to our brush library and I'm gonna grab the monoline brush to start with because we're gonna create a nice web that sits right at the back. So I'm gonna create a web that just reaches out from here. And then maybe down into there too. A little curve out from there and maybe one here too. And again, let's create some nice curves at the top. Nice curves, let them run out to the sides. And because this is our final layer, we can go ahead and maybe create some supports that maybe run all the way across the design. So hold your pen down and maybe run that across there. You could even run one across there if you wish. In fact, let's maybe just move one down into there. And then for the rest of the webs, we just repeat the same steps. So the same really nice little curve lines, let them run out. Guesstimate where they are around here. You can just sort of do what you want in behind there because that pumpkin's in the way. Great, nice little curves. I think it always looks good when you sort of make your gaps a little bit random, not all so uniformed. That way everything looks a lot more sort of authentic. And there we go, we've got a nice big web in the back there. Let's maybe even run a line from say here to out here, and maybe even one that runs up to the very top there. And let's add one here too. Awesome. And then I think that will do it. So let's go to our layers and pinch that web to that layer. If we then take a look at our design, we've now added in all the fun little elements per layer and we can now get working on the 3D effects. Now our light source is gonna to be top left, so it's gonna come down to the bottom right, meaning we need to add a white edge to each layer. Now to do this, we swipe the layer we were just working on, which is the back one, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The top one, tap on it and clipping mask it down. The bottom one out the two. It should already be alpha lock, so you can go to your colors and double tap in the top left hand corner to select white. Then go to your layers, tap on the bottom one and fill it. Then go to your one that's clipped above, grab your cursor, and on this occasion just tap once in the bottom right. So move it once and then tap on your cursor when you're done. So all you do is tap and you add in this crisp white edge all the way around that layer and we repeat that all the way up. So we're done with those two, we pinch them together. We go up to the next layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The top one out the two, we tap on it and clipping mask it. The bottom one out the two, we tap on it and we fill it. We go back to the layer above that is clipped. Go back to your cursor and tap once in the bottom right. So tap once, tap on your cursor when you're done. Go back to the layer and pinch the two together. Then go to the next layer up, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Tap on the top one and clipping mask it down. The bottom layer out the two, we tap on it and we fill it. 
we go back to the layer above. Now on this occasion, we're going to grab our cursor and we're going to tap twice in the bottom right. So one, two, and then tap on your cursor when you're done. We're going to be revealing more of a highlight edge because we're getting closer up to the surface. Everything further down is a bit further away from the light. Then go back to your layer and pinch the two together. Go up to the layer above and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Tap on this layer and clipping mask it to the one we just duplicated underneath. Tap on the one underneath and tap on it and fill it. Go back up to the clipped one. Grab your cursor. You may need to start zooming out of your canvas, otherwise you'll do something like that. And we tap twice in the bottom right. So one, two. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Then go to your layer and pinch the two together. We've got a couple more to do this too. So we go up a layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Tap on this one and clipping mask it down. The bottom one out the two, we tap on it and we fill it. And then go to the clip layer above. Tap on your cursor and tap three times this time in the bottom right. So one, two, three. And tap on your cursor when you're done. Then go to your layers and pinch the two together. Go to the layer above, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Tap on this layer and clip it to the one underneath. Tap on the one underneath. Now you will need to tap on this occasion and alpha lock it. Tap on the layer and then fill it. Then go up a layer again. Grab your cursor. You may need to zoom out of your canvas, but we're going to go three times again. One, two, three. Tap on your cursor when you're done. Then go back to your layers and pinch the two together. And go up to the top layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. Tap on that layer and clipping mask it down. The bottom one out the two. Tap on the layer and alpha lock it before you then tap on the layer and fill it. And then grab the layer above. Grab your cursor and tap three times in the bottom right. So one, two, three. Maybe let's go fourth. Let's go for four. And tap on your cursor when you're done. And then we go up to our layers and we pinch the last two layers together. Now we need to go ahead and go to our colors and double tap at the bottom with the disk to select black because now we're going to go ahead and add in all the shadows. So we're going to go to our layers. We're going to go ahead and swipe our top layer to the left and duplicate it. And the bottom one out the two, they are both alpha lock. So we're going to tap on the layer and fill it. We're then going to tap on the layer and turn off the alpha lock. We're going to go to its layer option from normal and change it to overlay. We're going to go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, and if we swipe from left to right, we'll add in the first of the shadows at 15%. Tap on your adjustments when you're done. Then go back to your layers again. Go down to the next color layer and repeat the steps. Swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, we tap on it and we fill it. We tap on the layer and turn off the alpha lock. And we then change the layer option from normal to overlay before we go up to our adjustments and we Gaussian blur it. Again, swipe from left to right, adding in a 15% Gaussian blur. Tap on your adjustments when you're done. Go to your layers, go down to the next color layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, we tap on it and we fill it. And we tap on it and turn off the alpha lock. Change the layer option from normal to overlay. And then go to your adjustments, Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right, adding in a 15% Gaussian blur. And tap on your adjustments when you're done. Go back to your layers, go down to the next color layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, tap on it and fill it. Tap on it and turn off the alpha lock and change the layer option from normal to overlay. Then go to your adjustments, Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right adding in another 15% Gaussian blur and tap on your adjustments when you're done. Let's go back to our layers and repeat this now all the way down. So swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, we tap on it and we fill it. We then tap on the layer and turn off the alpha lock and we change the layer option from normal to overlay. We then go to adjustments, Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right, adding in a 15% Gaussian blur. Tap on your adjustments when you're done. Go back to your layers, go down a layer, swipe it to the left and duplicate it. The bottom one out the two, tap on it and fill it. Tap on it and turn off your alpha lock. Change the layer option from normal to overlay. Go to your adjustments, Gaussian blur and swipe from left to right, adding in that 15% blur there. And tap on your adjustments when you're done. Then go to your layers. Go down to the final layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And the bottom one, tap on it and fill it. Tap on it and turn off the alpha lock. 
Change the layer option from normal to overlay. Go to your adjustments, Gaussian blur, and swipe from left to right, adding in that 15% Gaussian blur, and tap on your adjustments when you're done. Now look at that, we've got this beautiful depth effect already there, but the real point here is where we go ahead and move this and angle the lighting how we need it. So if we go to our layers, we've got the final shadow selected. If we swipe from left to right on all of the shadow layers, then grab your cursor, use the uniform option and just bring this node in a little bit in the top right. You'll already see, look how cool that looks because the shadow's going this way, but they're incorrect against our highlights. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and move it down to the bottom right. That will give us our angle a little bit more correct. So we want our shadows to be down to the bottom right. And you can see that I've moved it pretty much down into the bottom right corner. And it's up to you where you want to angle them, how much of a gap. You can maybe move that up a little bit so it's not quite so down and drastic. But that is where I'm going to leave it. So you can see I've scaled it down, moved it one or two pixels out to the right, and probably about sort of eight to nine down at the bottom there. And then tap on your cursor when you're done. Now we've added in the lighting. The next step is just to give it that canvas look and we're done. So we go right to the top of our layers. We create a new layer. With black still selected, we're going to go back to our brush. And inside the Halloween stamps collection, you'll find the canvas texture that I've added. Now if you max this size out and give your canvas a really nice light coat. Now you want to be a bit lighter than what I just did there. So nice and light, a nice light coat all over the canvas, making sure you also go inside the center as well. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our layers and we're going to go ahead and tap on this layer. We're going to change it to overlay. And then we're going to swipe it to the left and duplicate it. And the bottom one out the two, just tap on it and clip it to the top layer. So what I did there was, if we go to our layers, we've got two lots of the canvas texture, one that covers the whole screen, including the center, and another one that only shows on the top layer. Because this is really light, basically, we want to add in a little bit more canvas texture just to show it on the lighter surface. And in fact, you can on this layer, if you want to, go in here and maybe darken it up a little bit if you feel necessary, or even swipe the layer to the left and duplicate it and add in even more texture on the top layer. It's totally up to you. But if I now go to my actions and turn off the drawing guide, if I go ahead and zoom in and we go full screen with four fingers, we end up with today's finished design. And as always, be sure to come and share your designs with me over on Instagram. I love seeing your finished creations. And if you didn't already know, I post more tutorials every single month over on my Patreon. If you want to get your name featured in videos, sneak peeks of upcoming designs, early access to tutorials and much, much more. There's links in the description down below for you to come and become a supporter over on Patreon. And as always, today's equipment list is the Sketchboard Pro that, as always, you can use code JOELCREATE to get yourself a nice 10% off. I'm using the Ghost Paper Screen Cover by Upper, as well as their grip and the glove for today is the Pen Tips Glove. So links will be in the description down below to all the equipment. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.